Hello, my name is Jamie Terrell and I'm a candidate for Fall River School Committee. I'm a lifelong resident of Fall River. I am married to the former Diana Belmore and we are the parents of three children. Nicole, age 25, a graduate of Johnson & Wales University. Daniel, age 22, and Andrew, age 18, both students at UMass Dartmouth. I seek the Office of School Committee for a variety of reasons. I firmly believe that education is the foundation and the underpinning of the community. The quality of education affects everything from social issues to crime to economic development. If the City of Fall River hopes to attract industries that provide good paying jobs, then, then we must be able to provide an educated workforce to fill those positions. Everyone who is a resident of the City of Fall River has a vested interest in the success of the public school system. Currently, the Fall River school system is operating under a state mandated recovery plan. It is imperative that progress be made with respect to benchmarks and goals laid out in this plan. In the area of fiscal management, the establishment of a school department budget is often done at the last minute with little, limited time for study and debate by the school committee. I would propose the establishment of policies that will build a budget based upon a zero-based approach in every school building. There would be the establishment of a series of deadlines which would require central administration to present to the school committee a preliminary budget by a predetermined date that would give the committee ample time for study and debate. When building a budget, the day-to-day -day needs of classroom instruction must be met before all areas are addressed. Our focus must be on providing the teachers and paraprofessionals in the classroom with the tools they need to educate our students. We must use every means necessary to control the problem of ever-expanding class sizes which detract from the learning process and shortchange the students of the system. The problem with the school department budget not, lies not with bloated areas of waste, but in the decisions made as to where and how available financial resources are used. One area of concern is the growth of middle management positions over the past several years. The allocation of funds should be first and foremost in those areas which provide direct student services. Few of these middle management positions have direct student contact and carry salaries well beyond what is paid to even the most experienced classroom teachers. The four of the public schools face the challenge of servicing a student population with many wide and varying needs. In meeting these needs, it is important that funding be used to provide teachers and paraprofessionals who can assist students who very often struggle to learn for a number of reasons. I'd also like to address the area of collective bargaining. When the school year began in September, once again, the members of the Four of Educators Association returned to school without a contract. The superintendent has stated on several occasions that the absence of a contract has a negative effect on teacher morale and is a distraction to the learning process. I would like to explore the possibility of replacing traditional collective bargaining methods with the process of interest-based or collaborative bargaining. In the collaborative bargaining process, both members of the FREA and the school committee, after a brief training program in the collaborative process, will be at the table face-to-face -face with a facilitator. This process was used in the past and resulted in the re resolution of contract negotiations in a timely manner. With respect to the school committee itself, although education reform changed the role of school committees substantially, especially in matters of personnel, it did not change the power of the school committee to establish policies under which a school system operates. I believe in that many ways that power has fallen into disuse. For example, while a school committee is no longer involved in hiring other than the superintendent of schools, it can establish policies that affect the qualifications of such positions as building principals. Fall River has gone from a, a city of neighborhood schools to one with large educational complexes. There are certification requirements for these positions, but they do not address the issue of large building man management. This has been a problem on at least two occasions. School committee policies can, can include demonstrated building management skills as a part of the initial job qualifications. It is time that the role of, roles of the school committee and central administration are clearly defined. The school committee has the responsibility to establish policies under which our public schools are operated. It is the responsibility of the superintendent and her leadership team to see that our schools are run on a daily basis within the framework of those policies. There is a greater need for direct communication between the school committee and those who provide classroom instruction on a daily basis. While the school committee cannot and should not involve itself in the day-to-day -day operation of the public schools, it can serve as an advocate in bringing to the attention of the school department central administration the concerns of students, parents, teachers, and the citizens of the community. I would like to thank Fall River Cable Television for the opportunity to address you, and I would respectfully ask for your vote on November the 8th. Thank you.